everyone. Karen the Warp Spinster here. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. It's all about circles again. And up until 3.30 this morning, I didn't know what I was going to do. I had enough ideas. That wasn't the issue. I didn't know which I was going to do. There weren't any that came to the top saying, oh yes, let's do this one this week. Until 3.30 this morning when I woke up and percolator popped into my head. I'll talk a little bit more about percolator, but it's an app that basically converts photograph, artwork, whatever, into that design, but using circles as the components. So think of it as kind of um, a patchwork of circles for that design, and I'll, I'll show that to you later. I used the app first, I don't know, seven or eight years ago, maybe, and I'll show you some examples of the photographs and quilts that I created, percolated things from. But I lost track of the app. I think it went away for a while. And I periodically I checked and I couldn't find it again. And as new iOS systems came up, it wasn't compatible with the new systems. Then when this idea came up and I thought, oh, I'll just use one of my designs or quilts and talk about how we might make that into a quilt using circles. This is a longer explanation than I planned on. <laughs> And I thought this morning when I got up, well, I'll just check to make sure that there isn't an app now. And lo and behold, you can now get the Percolator app again. I believe it used to be free. Now it's $2.99, which is, is well worth it for me because I have so much fun with it. So we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but a couple of things that I wanted to talk about first um, relates to when I talked about Peekaboo last time why you might use reverse applique instead of traditional applique. Well, reverse applique isn't a traditional, <laughs> untraditional, it's just the, the common applique. And I thought I might try doing that peekaboo where I cut out circles from an overlay fabric to show what's underneath. This is a Jane Sassaman fabric from hmm, quite a long time ago actually, but she's still designing fabrics. If you don't know Jane Sassaman, S-A-S-S-A-M-A-N, she does beautiful stuff and she's doing machine applique things. She just has wild, wonderful, bold, colorful designs. This probably, I don't know which came first, the design or the quilt, but she undoubtedly made a quilt with this design with this much detail. <laughs> um, or she made this print first, then made a quilt. I'm thinking it may be more likely that she made the quilt and then they did the print, but whatever. Anyway, check it out. She has some, some really gorgeous fabric. I took a class from her years ago and um, she's just amazing. She's just amazing. She does have some books out too as well. So I want to cut out some circles and I'm not going to do the turn under reverse applique. I'm just going to probably zigzag, do some sort of decorative stitch around it to secure it and to keep the edges from raveling too much. I have my various circle templates, some of which are obviously too large, but I want to cut out maybe a couple different sizes and just see how they look when this starts to peek through. Now this may be a larger print and a smaller overlay than I probably would want. I would probably want to have, you know, a bigger piece that would cover, say, all of this butterfly motif. But just for trying this out, I'm going to start with smaller ones. And this, I'll probably use the inside of that one. And so a configuration like that. I have a white pencil here. This one is a Bowen. It's a like a mechanical white chalk pencil. And I need to have enough room to do some stitching. Let me think about, maybe I don't want, 
one this large. So I think what I'm going to do is these two pieces first, and then I'll fit this one in down here. I have to remember that I need some margins because I'm going to be appliquing around them. I may want them spaced differently. Oh, sorry. Wow. Probably sounded bad. Some closer together, some not so much. Well, I'm only doing three in this case. I hope you can't hear Elroy. My robo back is working this morning. And now, how about this one down here? And have it closer to this small one. is not the perfect combination of circle sizes probably and again you could you, um, do this using a, a school compass or plates or the bottoms of glasses embroidery hoops whatever you have that's round that is the size that you want and this is just a trial piece as i said ordinarily i would have this be larger so i'm going to cut these out and then we'll see what the peekaboo looks like and i can think about how I want to place it around there. And we'll see what happens. I have the three circles cut out and now I can choose where I want them to go. The larger one is going to probably be what I'll use for focus. And I think maybe the head of the butterfly. And then these two are just going to fall in some random spot on the design. Now, and I do have some cutouts that I can put in my crumb bin or use for topical applique. That doesn't sound right, but. <laughs> now, some choices that I have here, now that I think on it, if I want this to be the focal point, and then this is just bringing in movement and color here, then I could applique this in a color, say this teal blue around here, and do a, a beefy stitch. If I do a zigzag, which is, I don't know, a fairly likely one, then I would want it to be, I think for me, pretty bold. So it will be that, that teal color, and it will be reasonably close together I'm going to shorten the stitch so the, the zigs and zags are closer together. And then the stitch width is going to be reasonably wide because I want you to be able to see the stitching. It will draw the eye in and focus it on this. So it's like looking through a lens. And then these I might just do in black or a smoky invisible thread. I might also want to... I was thinking I'm, I'm not gonna do this today because I don't know exactly where I'm gonna proceed with this. I thought it would just sort of be a sample and here we go. But I'm thinking I have this long, narrow strip of fabric and I've got quite a bit of Jane's fabric. So I might do a long strip and just keep doing oops, peek throughs as I go across. If I do that, Ooh, would be fun. I've got a really big circle, but I don't think it's big enough to, I mean, I don't know that this fabric is big enough to do the whole butterfly. Mine's wandering, Karen. Come on back. Come on down. I think I might want to do some circles that are these pops of color in solid or a, a near solid print so that it it disperses. It, the eye can rest on the black, but I think I might also want to highlight some of these colors in here, the pink and this yellow, maybe this brighter blue, and have some pops of that going across. So that would be a, 
I'm going to call it a topical applique. I don't know what else to call it. So I just, for one of my other purposes, I happen to pull some bright fabrics and this just happened to be the right one. So if you can imagine, in fact, let me cut a circle. Wouldn't that look nice with that? Just, or I could have some strips so it could be like slides and I could have a strip of this and then go on and highlight another part. This is gonna be pretty lame, but <laughs> this is a, the idea. So I have this strip in between and then maybe on the next slide, I highlight the wing. Hmm. That's a possibility too. In the meantime, I am going to cut a circle of this, probably a fairly small one, and see how that looks with this. I could also do a cutout here that runs off the edge, or one of these topical appliques that goes off the edge or it could overlap this. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. It's going to be fun. All right, let me cut a circle and I'll be back. So I cut a circle that same size and I don't want it there because that's too uniform somehow. And I may want it a different size. I would want it to maybe hug that or come down here Overlap that one a little bit. Overlap that one. Maybe I want to leave that as is with that negative space. Is it negative space if it's a reverse app? I don't know. Thought I was gonna like the overlap. Don't know that I do. That might bring a little more focus to here, hard to tell with this fabric off to the side there, isn't it? Let me find my ruler. Do this without making too much noise. Just give us a little bit of a visual edge there. I don't know. I think it has some possibilities. I don't know that that's the right size. And I would have lots of room for placement going across here. I think this is something I'm going to explore more in a future week. Cut out some more circles from there and then see about what I might want to do. Whether I want to do a frame here. Cool. All right, I like that concept. So that's something that I can explore. And the next thing I want to talk about is a follow-up on last week. Last week we talked about reverse applique and I ended up using this guideline here. I've got the, the curve clipped up to the point where I'm turning and remember this is reverse applique so this is what's going to be applique. I had to cut the circle a little larger so that I could turn those edges under to create this size of circle. So I have clipped the curves and Janadel, I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right, I like to get people's names right, I apologize, had suggested that, well, since you use this form to do a, a topical applique, where I cut the circle out and then draw the fabric up around it to create that perfect circle. Couldn't you do that with the sort of negative of the cutout? And yes, that's an excellent idea. I like it, we think alike. That was originally my plan, to be honest with you. And here's what happened. I did film that, I, I honestly did even though I am standing basically over my camera, sometimes I hit the stop button 
but I don't really hit the stop button, but I think I have. So it continues to record what I'm doing off camera. And then I come back and hit the button again, thinking I'm now recording and I've actually stopped the recording. And that's what happened in that case. I'm standing right over it. You'd think I would notice that, but no. And it even gives a little beep. Anyway, so here's what Janadel was talking about, I think, is that I could use this cutout here, basically. It's a cutout template. I think in that case, I would want to mark the circle that I want on the back of the fabric rather than the front and then pull it over and use the edge of that to get a nice crisp circle. And I think that's a really good idea. I ended up not doing that last time, sorry for shaking the camera, because it was too fiddly for me. And I think, you know, if I'd recorded it, I could go back and look at it. <laughs> I think it was because I had that fleece, the, the fusible fleece that I was using to prevent the shadow through of the thinner fabric. But I think this works, this would work just fine. And then I think I'd probably finger press it and then use my iron to go and press that better. I could also use a little bit of flatter or best press or spray starch or something, which would help that to hold better. So that is indeed an option and it's working better for me today than it did last week. So thank you, Janadel, for um, bringing me back to that because I think if I didn't have to do that masking bit, that this would be okay. I'm not on my pressing mat, so <laughs> I don't want to press that. But then that would give you the same advantage of that, that crisp, albeit thin edge, to push the fabric up against to make that a nice crisp curve. So thank you for that. I have checked, I am actually recording this. Surprise, surprise. All right, now I want to talk about Percolator, which is the app that I mentioned at the beginning. And I'm going to set this up for my iPad and I'll, I'll do that. I will hit the stop button <laughs> and then I'm going to set that up so that it doesn't drive your eyes a little bit wild. I'll be back. Let's talk about Percolator. This is what the icon for the Percolator app looks like. I know it's available uh, for iOS devices. I have it on both my iPad and my iPhone. I don't know about Android, the Google Play Store or the Android Store. You could check. In this second iteration, it may in fact be available there. So if we go into Percolator, and first we choose a photo. And I am going to go to my album where I have some percolated. And this one is in fact one of my designs, fabric designs. And you can see that it has created circles to make up that design. And you have choices down here. You can have it be extra fine. It can be fine. Let me go a little more coarse. This is the grind for the beans, the coffee beans. And then it changes it to coarse so that the circles are larger. Um, you can, you have different choices here. You've got color gels, which is a softer than circles, whoops being very precise in my movements and charmed. Some of them I don't see much difference. It depends on the design you have. This gives it a softer, more pastel look. You can have it do rings. And so now you have circles within circles. You used to be able to do that in the first iteration. As I recall, you could do a couple three deep 
Um, this is just one deep. And then softer still, overprint never did much for me, for my purposes. Love this one. And then you can do various other things. Then you can also choose, let's go with just circles here. You can also choose the background. So here I have black. And then I can go to light and sweet, which is a possibility. There's soy, which just gives it a kind of an off-white background. And then stirred changes up the colors. This is just a random, it does what it wants kind of thing. And, well, that's interesting. I don't know what that's about. I haven't played with that yet. Oh, the texture. Interesting. Well, for my purposes, the texture doesn't matter because... Ooh, look at that. Wow, that's a bright one. All right, so I'm going back to black here. And I see this as a quilt. I have, in fact, I'll show you some photos. I have, in fact, done a couple of my older quilts where I percolated them and got a whole new version of a quilt. But I'm liking this quite a lot. And I can, I'm zoomed in as far as I can, all these circles. That's a lot of circles. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> that's a lot of circles. But I could do, say, just a portion of it, which would be kind of fun and have a lot of um, negative space around it. Or I could pick and choose which of these circles I did and leave some negative space here and there so that it's kind of a incomplete of this. So lots of ideas there. One of the things that I really like is this light and sweet where it's got the bright colors on the white background. I'm not sure if I want to do that or the black first. I don't know. The black is closer to my original design. Hmm. It's a toss up for me. I don't know. Which do you like better? So what I was thinking, I was in fact looking at that this morning and I'm thinking of doing like almost a maquette. So I would do a long, let me zoom out again, sorry, a long, relatively narrow white piece, and then put the circles on top. I could do the same thing with black, of course. If I have black as the background, then I have that challenge of preventing that black from shadowing through, unless I decide I like that. Could be. If I do the light and sweet, then I'm good to go because it's going to be darker fabrics, brighter fabrics on top of the white so that I could do a strip of those, for example, maybe like that. This is on fine. Let me see. Let's go to coarse. Not a lot of difference there. So that gives you an idea of what Percolator does and how you might think about using it for quilts. Let me go to the Percolated album here and I'll show you. This was an early percolation from, I think it's 20, oh, I guess it's 2012. <clears throat> and this is from a photo of my coffee house quilt which was back in my cabin star designs days. This I would probably do in solids. And you can see there are some really good sized circles out here and a lot of smaller ones as well. You can see how small those get. And I might not 
be inclined to do them that small. They might be something like, um, I don't know, French knots or something that I put in there. Then this one, I love this one. This is from my To The Nines quilt. And again, this has a lot of small, very small circles in there. But I wouldn't have to do those small circles. I could just do the larger ones and let the background show through. I should find photos of these and run them through the new percolator, see what they do. But I love the colors in this. Then this is from a photograph of, I think, the Capitol building in Des Moines, in Iowa. Um, it might be the dome at the Jefferson Building Library of Congress. No, I don't think so. I think this is the either the the dome in the Capitol. That doesn't seem right. This is probably the dome in in the historical building. But anyway, um, so that's what happens when you do a photograph. And this is kind of an interesting design. It's a kind of a meta circle. <laughs> <laughs> Got circles making up this circle. And this is from... Oh, interesting. Took me a minute. Um, this is from my Tumbling Sunflowers quilt. Uh, the colors were throwing me off because this is... This is should be greens and golds and some browns. But what I found interesting about this one as I started looking at it more is the edge here, the border, is, as I recall, a solid border. So this is kind of interesting what it's done around the edge. And then these two, they look like they're bear paw patches, but they aren't on the original quilt. So I think that's just fascinating. And there's an option instead of doing just a circle within a square. And it's nice to have these around the edge. Love this swirly thing. But to do this inside, I think, is really interesting. There must have been some shadow or color variation in there. I just, I think that's fascinating. So, oh, and this is from, this is a bouquet that I bought at the Amsterdam Flower Market when I went on a river cruise, and this is the percolated bouquet. And then this is the, the original design for the one that we just did. Let's try doing, let's try percolating this one, see what happens. Can you tell I have a lot of fun playing with this? Let's go to the photo library and albums, percolated, oops percolated and let's do this. So this is my pointless quilt. Wow, that's just kind of an abstract throw some circles on there, isn't it? <laughs> let's see what happens if we do fine. Yeah, that's a little closer too. Wow. All right, let's do it on black. That's kind of funky, isn't it? I don't know how I'm feeling about that. At least on fine, you get some idea of the original design of the quilt. Extra fine gets closer to it. In this case, I think I would definitely do a, um, portion of it, not the whole thing. First, cause it's a lot of circles and <laughs> second, because yikes, it's a lot of circles. Eh, kind of like that one. In a way they, they look like a stained glass effect. Wow. And the um, Ray Ray has 
these segments, it, it segments the circle into arcs. Anyway, that is percolator. I could play with that all day, but <laughs> the reason I'm showing you that is because even if you don't have percolator, you could go into a design that you have or a quilt and start plugging circles into the spaces. So let's say I've got, let me do this. All right, so here is my boxed in quilt. And this is a version done by my friend Candy. I took this photo at a guild meeting show and tell. And so you can see that it's not the best photo in the world, but it will demonstrate what we could do. So let's say we take this blue color and I'm just going to draw in some circles here. Oops. I know what I'm doing. I'm doing something wrong here. I want to start there. And I think maybe I want to fade this a bit. So if you were doing this on paper, you could use some tracing paper over a photo and draw circles with markers, colored pencils, whatever. And so I'm going to draw a circle here. And maybe I want some smaller circles. That one really. It's kind of doodling in a way. You're just doodling with circles. You could change up the color and make it a little darker or a little lighter in some cases. Um, then we've got a gray here. You could do rings and we'll talk about rings in another video. But let's say I want to do something in gray here. And again, it's probably a darker gray. I've changed the transparency on here, but this will work for our purposes. We can, and then maybe I want to do a couple of smaller ones like this. And another large one here. I can just do them randomly. And then I want black here. And I might kind of do something a little bit in opposition to what's going on there. Since it's the same size of strip in the actual quilt. And depending on what size circles you want to do, you could do a little one there, but I'm probably not going to be piecing or applicating that. And then going across here as well. And this doesn't have to be circles. You could do this with any kind of shape. And these, of course, are not perfect circles by any stretch of the imagination. All right, and then I'll do some white. Now let's see how it's looking. Let's turn that off. And of course, those aren't really good circles, but you get the idea for what you could do. And I could also do that in squares or triangles. Let's try it with squares. I know we're doing circles, but let's try it with squares. So I will use, oh, let's find a nice teal here. Well, let's find a blue that will show up better than I think that teal might. So you could do some improv -y stuff. Obviously, I'm not sticking to squares here.
So there's what you could do with circles for that, say this design. Here's what you could do with squares. Looks kind of like a cobblestone thing. Now, if, if you don't have your own quilt designs, of course, start with a traditional pattern. Do a Ohio star, or let's do a friendship star. I'm just gonna sketch one very quickly. All right, here's a very quick and dirty friendship star. Um, let me draw in the center here, center square, which we may or may not want, but we're gonna put it in there anyway. And let's say we wanna do it in a purple. To start out with a small circle there. Bigger one there. Anyway, you get the idea, and you could do the center in, say, a different color. It's going to make it easier, Karen. Say we want to do a teal in the center. I don't know how long. Kind of like that. And then you could repeat that. Um, let's say we duplicate this in case you want to do, you know, more. <laughs> I know. I'm wearing this poor thing to death. Seems less abstracty to me and I'm kind of aiming for abstract, so. Yeah, well, you get the idea. Anyway. So that is my thought for using some circles for a design. And I'm thinking that I want to do it on this white strip of fabric and do topical applique because this is quite a thin fabric. I think you saw that when it was <laughs> on top of some other fabric and I don't wanna to have to worry about shielding. So I think it will be what I call topical. I wish I knew what the industry would like me to call that. And maybe there will be some black in there and maybe there won't. And I will probably, one of the thoughts that I had was perhaps doing just raw edge applique where I just do a straight stitch around the edge and then it, it kind of ravels with time and washing if I wash it. That's an option as well as doing the zigzag or decorative stitches around the edges. This might be kind of fun if, you know, we gotta do black and white prints. <laughs> we just have to put in some black and white prints. I think that's something we will explore maybe next week. And then we've got the peekaboo to do one week. Let's see how that turns out. So things to think about, um, if you want to give this a try, if you could do percolator, that would be fine for just say a traditional block or traditional quilt you have done or an improv that you've done and you wanna see what it would look like in percolator. Or if you wanna do pencil and paper method, that works fine too. And next week, we'll do some more of that. This has been a lot of fun for me today. Um, not so much sewing, but some ideas for what we might do. And once we start doing them, who knows how they'll turn out. <laughs> you know how that goes on this channel. All right. Oh, I will say that um, one thing I do want to say is that I have a collection of black and white prints, um, collections called Desk Set, that I'm putting up in my Spoonflower shop. 
I haven't gotten the proofs for them yet, so I, I can't put it up for sale. You can take a look at it. They are public on my site. I'll put a link down below and you can take a look at it, see if there's anything there you might like. I'm not pushing you to buy it at all. I don't care if you buy it or don't. <laughs> it's just an option for you. I'm sort of pushing. Um, I hope that I would get the samples yesterday, but maybe I will get them today. And the timing matters because Spoonflower fabric is more expensive than what you get in quilt shops because it's print on demand. I think cotton, their basic cotton is like 17 a yard and the cotton poplin, which is what I usually order is like 19 a yard. So it's not the least expensive fabric out there, but I think it ends tomorrow. They frequently have sales and they are currently having 50% off fat quarters. I think it ends tomorrow. So that's why I'm hoping that the samples come sooner rather than later so that you could get in on this sale if you see something you like and want to buy it. If you don't, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not pushing it. I'm just trying to give you an option for getting some black and white prints if there are any you like. If they do come in today and they look okay, I will mark them for sale on Spoonflower and then do a short video showing them to you. They are public. You can see what they look like now. It's called Desk Set. And I will put a link to my shop below. I haven't been adding things to my shop. Most of the stuff that's in there, and there's not much, um, are older pieces. And I'm going to start adding some newer ones in. Anyway, end of, of PSA, whatever. <laughs> so that's it for next week, or for this week. For next week, I think I will be working on this as I said, and then we'll do the peekaboo. And at some point I want to get to piecing circles. It's not as bad as you might fear. In the meantime, I hope that you will be well, be safe, be happy, be quilting. Peace out. <music>